everything together so that uh, it will help you alongside the learning you're doing at home. We're going to start off this morning by doing some features of persuasive texts, okay? And we're going to use the model text because you using the uh, rules of summer text and thinking about your time in lockdown are eventually by the end of this unit of work <coughs> going to create a persuasive speech around rules that you would like to put in place um, now that lockdown is easing and hopefully soon coming to an end. So we're going to start off by looking at uh, a couple of videos to help us to identify some persuasive features. Um, those of you at home, if you look down in the description of this video, I've put the links to the two videos that we're going to be watching in class this morning. So go down, have a click on that first link and have a look at some of the pe some of the features of a persuasive text. Okay, hopefully you've had a chance to go over those videos and have a look at some of the persuasive features that we're going to be using for our persuasive text. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use an example speech uh, and pick out some features so that you get an idea of what you're going to be doing. Um, for you guys at home, I'm going to put the example speech up on the screen um, and then I'll, um, so that you've got, uh, you can pause the video and have a look at it, have a read through it and then you'll be able to uh, work along with us when we're picking out features even if you can't exactly see the speech on the board. So uh, have a look at that speech, have, pause the video, have a read through it, and then you'll be able to find features along with us. Okay. okay, so hopefully you've had a chance to read through that speech that I just put up. That was a speech that was given by Bill Clinton, um, probably in about 1990, uh, 1999, sorry. And he um, was speaking on the birthday of Martin Luther King, which is why he brought it up later on in the speech. Um, what we're going to do is use this example to pick out some features that are, are useful when writing persuasive speech. Um, and we're going to see how he used them. If you can't see the text very well, I apologise, but I'll talk through the examples that I'm giving as I'm doing it. Um, and then what you're going to do later on, guys, is you're going to have a look at the model text uh, that I've given you. And I'm going to put it up on the screen for those of you at home. And you're going to look at picking out some key features uh, that we've used in the model that we're then going to work on uh, for you to write your persuasive speech at the end of this unit of work. Does that make sense? Everybody OK? Hopefully you're keeping up OK at home. Right, let's have a look. The first thing I'm going to talk about is um, personal pronouns. Now, the thing with personal pronouns is it brings the audience in and helps them to be part of the speech. It helps them feel connected. Uh, and Bill Clinton uses personal pronouns a lot. So I'm just going to put a little key up here. Okay, so PP, personal pronouns. Okay, and it's all of the times that he describes them as we or our. Okay, and those personal pronouns really help to connect your reader or your listener uh, with your topic. You're bringing them in, you're drawing them in by using those personal pronouns. So, first of all, first straight away in the first sentence, he says, each and every one of us. Now, us is that personal pronoun. Okay, each and every one of us. Um, for ourselves, our families, our neighbours and our nation. This our, 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 yeah? Uh, and even as we go further through, my fellow Americans, as we look back, yeah, as we look back, we may not ask, uh, sorry, we may ask, okay? Fellow citizens, let us build and it's drawing the audience in, either as a reader or as a uh, listener. It's drawing them into your topic, okay? And helping them to connect with what you're talking about. Okay, the next sort of feature that he uses and the next feature that we're going to be looking out for when we are looking at our um, model is... Um, emotive language. Now, emotive language is really important, as we saw in the video as well, um, for, again, connecting the 
reader or the listener with the topic. Okay, you're basically tugging on their heartstrings. Okay, you're not talking necessarily to their brains. You want them to think about it. You want them to have an emotional connection to what you're talking about. Okay, in this, he talks, he does it a lot through uh, use, the use of personal pronouns. And then he does it a lot through things like um, ourselves, our families, our neighbours, our nation. Yeah, this is all quite emotive. Making those connections there is all quite emotive. Um, okay, the, um, he uses words like constant curse. Yeah, it's, it's the dramatic and the emotive. Um, When we're looking through this, we're, he uses quite dramatic language, yeah, which is, is part of that emotion, connecting emotions. It doesn't necessarily have to be a, a, a good emotion. Um, like he uses words like plague um, and nearly destroyed our nation, um, fuel the fanaticism of terror. It's all dramatic it's all designed to create an emotional reaction in the reader or the listener okay um plague us still fuel the fanaticism of terror it's all designed to create an emotional response um you know cripple both those who hate and of course those who are hated robbing both of what they might become um and so things like dark impulses. Um, all of those things, any of that language which provides or provokes an emotional response in your reader or listener is considered emotive language. Okay, it's more dramatic, it's more exaggerated. It's designed to make a connection between the reader listener and the topic okay um the other thing he uses as well is uh repetition repetition is a really important one but it has to be used in the correct way okay it's a really good use of la a language feature in a persuasive speech but it has to be used in the right way because what you don't want to do is be repeating the same thing over and over and over and over again because then people will get bored but what you want is certain phrases or certain ideas repeated. And you saw in the second video that they talk about triples. Okay, often you repeat things three times. Um, and there's a couple of examples of this in here. So um, this bit at the top, ourselves, our families, our neighbours, our nation. Yeah, it's got that our, 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 our. So that whole phrase, it sounds, is a bit of an example of that repetition. Yeah, our greatest responsibility. Yeah, um, for any one of us to succeed, we must succeed as one America. Again, you've got that repetition, succeed, succeed. Um, and he uses that, that repetition to help um, get his point across. Um, further down you'll see that he, um, there was a really good example. Where was that example? Um, there was a really good one. Oh, here. Live together, learn together, work together. Hear that repeat the together, together, together. That's how he's getting his point across. Yeah? Live together, learn together, work together. And it's that three time repetition um, that helps with the helps as a persuasive feature. Okay. Um, the other things we could be looking for. Well, what else? What else might we be looking for? We've talked about uh, personal pronouns. We've talked about emotive language. We've talked about repetition. What else? What else might we look for, Rana? Okay, good. Rhetorical questions. So let's see if we've got any rhetorical questions in here. Rhetorical questions are good. Why are they good? Why are rhetorical questions helpful? Jaden? Yeah, it makes the reader think, doesn't it? Or the listener think. Yeah? So 
here we've got um, the challenge of our past remains the challenge of our future. Will we be one nation, one people with a common destiny or not? There. Will we all come together or come apart? There's our rhetorical question. Often it's at the end, like at the end of a paragraph um, as well, because it sort of as you pause between paragraphs, it just gives people that little chance to think. Um, so there's two really nice examples at the top there. There was another one somewhere. Uh, here. Um, my fellow Americans, as we look back at this remarkable century, we must ask, can we hope not just to follow, but even to surpass the achievements of the 20th century in America and to avoid the awful, awful bloodshed that stained its legacy? Again, with a rhetorical question. Yeah also that includes quite a lot of emotion there but to help to make the reader think yeah to make the reader think about what um about the topic yeah about the topic um there's also other things we can include and think about so we might talk about um fronted adverbials yeah each and every one of us um my fellow Americans, yeah, fellow citizens, we've got those fronted adverbials in there, okay, um, and uh, there's also maybe the occasional short sentence just for a bit of dramatic effect, we might use a dash maybe for a pause, um, he hasn't here but we could do and it might be something that you look for, so uh, the use of punctuation is also another one for us to maybe look at okay what we're going to do now is, is you're going to have a go at picking out some of these features in the model text that we've done for you for this um for the sort of persuasive feature that you're going to do so what we're going to do here in class we're going to read through the model text together uh and then you guys are going to have a go at picking out some features for those of you at home i'm going to put the model text up on the screen for you to have a read through pause the video read through that text and see which features you can pick out um, from that model text that we've been talking about already and then uh, we'll have a look at um, maybe writing a response or a bit of a reflection on how effectively those features have been Okay, so now you've had a chance to look through the um, model text that I've put up on the video for you. What I'd like you to do is have a read through that model text, really see if you can identify some of the features we've been talking about today. Um, the other thing I would like you to do is to um, think about the effectiveness of those features. So why have those features been used in those specific places? Uh, and what is it that's important about those features um, and how are they really being used to persuade in this speech? Well, um, once you've had a look through why you think they're effective, uh, just make sure you've had a read through that model. Make sure that you've really familiarised yourself with that model text because that's really going to help you uh, in thinking about writing your final outcome. Okay, I hope you've enjoyed the lesson today and going through some of those persuasive features. Uh, and I'll do another English lesson for you probably next week. Uh, to help with your English learning at home. Thanks very much, guys. See you later.